One of the things I really enjoy making in the blacksmith shop are axes. I like to make lots of different styles of axes. And a wrapped eye axe is one of the more traditional approaches to axe forging and is something that is very obtainable even if you don't have a power hammer or other heavy equipment. The wrapped eye allows you to obtain a very nice, even symmetrical eye without having to punch a hole so you don't need a power hammer or a press or you don't have to be able to swing a great big hammer to do this. The only thing you need to be able to do is forge weld. So let's take a look at what went into the making of this axe. Welcome back to Black Bear Ford. Let's get started on our axe. I have a pattern piece here that I keep hanging on the wall that tells me exactly what I need to do to start this axe. So let's take a look at the pattern. Now I don't know if you can read all of this or not, but it, it tells you exactly what it is. But you can also measure because this is full size. It's not just a template. It's a full size start. And it says it's half by one and a half cut nine inches long. So that tells me exactly what I need to start with. And it tells me that centered on my center line, I need to have an inch and a quarter mark. The center line is cut in here, but you don't do that on the finished ax. It's just on the pattern so I know what I'm doing. Because if it was just pencil marks, it would wear off. On the back side from the center line, or centered on the center line, I need three and a half inches to my marks. So the first thing we need to do is cut a piece of material that exact same size put all of our marks on it, then we can head to the anvil and get started. Now the reason we've laid this out on the other side and the reason that I put little grinder marks in there is so I can index and fuller in here. I want to put a little fuller in at both of these marks. This is way out of scale. but And then when we actually forge this, we're going to thin this out between these fullers, but I want to end up with a piece that has a raised section on one side and then at both ends and this is the part that will become the eye when this wraps around this will touch this and this is the pole of the axe then and this section is thinned out to become the eye so that's why these are laid out on opposite sides of the axe and you have to make sure you don't mess this up or this up as you draw all that out. So here's a piece that's already done to that stage. It's got the fullers in it. And here's one that has then been drawn out as I was mentioning. So hopefully you can see that in the camera. If not, hopefully you'll see it as we forge it. I get lots of requests to see more things in the coal forge, so I'm going to clean this old fire out, get rid of the ash and the clinker, and we'll light the coal forge for this axe. First thing I want to do is just define these marks a little bit better with a skinny fuller. If I'm working under the power hammer, I just use a piece of quarter inch round bar for this. I want to make sure that I've got marks that I'll be able to find at the edge of the anvil as I start to refine this. This works very well if you have a striker. Also do it under the treadle hammer, or like I say, power hammer. 
the exact same thing to all four marks just to get it all laid out and ready. Try and make them all the same depth too. Get the wedge out of my tool. I think I'm done with it. I'm going to hook the notch over the edge of the anvil where I can feel it and half face blows. Then I'm going to turn it over and hook the other notch over the other edge of the anvil and again half face blows. Be careful not to mess up your first little notch there but that starts to create that shape we want. Hopefully that gives you the idea. And I'm going to go to this diagonal peen hammer that's nice and heavy to spread that out. This is where you want to create some ears. Work from both sides to create them evenly. Thin this out till it's about a quarter inch thick, maybe, maybe a little thinner than that. There you can see the ears starting to form. And we'll get a chance to refine that. Now I'll go ahead and flip this around and work on the other side. I want to make both sides match at each step. You can do one end at a time, but I think it's easier. It keeps you from getting confused if you do alternating sides. Working at a good high heat helps. Now it's real important that both sides match, so get a pair of dividers or use a ruler and check that. Looks like this second side could be about a, an eighth of an inch longer through there. So we'll just stretch that out lightly. Also remember that heat causes this to expand and it may look a little bit different or measure slightly different on the hot side. The hot side might be longer. In this case the hot side was shorter so I know I needed to draw it out. And it looks better. The next thing I want to do is start refining those ears. I don't like little soft roundy ears. I like nice pointy ears like a Vulcan. To start that I'm going to go right here at the anvil. We 
you'll get a chance to work on these again later, but the better they are before you weld, the happier you'll be in the long run. You can also work on this side. You can also use a rounding hammer at the horn of the anvil and get a pretty nice effect here. Again, it pays to work both sides from both angles. But that's really getting to be what I want. So let's turn it around to the other side. So I'll use that same procedure and do it the same on both sides here. In with the rounding hammer. The more you can do at the forge, the less you have to do with a file or a grinder. But odds are you'll have to do some filing or grinding. It seems inevitable. Now something I did forget to mention is that these dimensions need to fit your drift. And the dimensions I gave do fit a fairly standard size axe handle that you can buy at most hardware stores, so it's, they're good dimensions. But if you're making your own handle and your own drift, do some test pieces and find out how much material you need to draw out so that it'll actually fit the drift you're going to use. I like to go ahead and spread this out at this stage and get it close to the shape I want so that when we weld the bit in, all we're doing is final forging and not doing a whole lot of movement of material that might shear the weld. And for that, we'll go back to the double diagonal peen, this four pound hammer. So mostly I'm just spreading this widthwise at this point. Now don't forge so far up the axe body that you end up messing up your shoulder here. You've got to keep that intact at this point. And be plenty of more foraging on this after we do the weld. So that's pretty good right there. The odds of getting these to be a perfect match are fairly slim. There'll be some filing or grinding or something, but you ought to get about the same amount of material on each side.
Those are about the same size. This one's a little bit tipped there, so I think I'll straighten that out a little bit. Could also be just a hair longer, it looks like. Yeah, it looks straighter. Lots of shaping left to do after we put the tool steel bit in. So now remember, the pole goes on the outside, these shoulders go on the inside to form the eye. Things always look pretty ugly as you fold them up, but you can get them to go together properly. Now remember the key element here is this shoulder on the inside, right through here. If the points on the ears don't line up, or if the pole is a little bit crooked, none of that really matters right now. Get this shoulder to line up. This is where a pair of knee tongs comes in really handy. You can grab that pole. This is our chance to try and even everything up. Boy, I really got those blades different sizes. That will take a little grinding before I weld, I think. Paying too much attention to talking to the camera, not enough to attention in forging here. But straighten that out so the eye lines up. Again, that's the key thing. It's the hardest thing to fix later. So that's where I'm going to leave that for now. I think I'm going to go to the grinder and I'm going to trim up that edge and make everything line up better and get it all ready for welding. And while that cools, let's work on what will be the steel cutting edge. So I have a piece of quarter by inch and a half, 1075 steel. 5160 is good for this, 1085 would be good for this. Just depends on what you're going to use the axe for to some extent, but 1075 is a good steel. It's oil hardening. And I'm going to, first I'm going to make it a little bit thicker because I'd like a thicker edge when we do the weld so it stays thicker. And then I'll draw out one edge so I've got a scarf on, along the edge of it. I would prefer to buy this as 5 16 by 1, but that seems like an odd size and the suppliers don't want to carry it that way. So we're going to make it closer to 5 16 by 1. I just want to draw out one edge so it'll form kind of a scarf when we weld this in. We actually want that to curve the other direction if we can get it to curve. Doesn't hurt to back bend it first. And as you get close to the edge, you might want to come to the edge of your anvil 
so your hammer is not striking the anvil. And make sure that's going to be long enough to fit in the axe body, and it is. That will become our cutting edge. I'm going to go ahead and bring this up to heat one more time, let it air cool and normalize. Both of these parts are going to need to cool for a little while. I need to let the axe body cool so I can grind it up and make things match. The weld will go smoother if I go ahead and take that extra step. The cutting edge needs to cool and normalize, then I can cut it off and make sure it's going to fit the axe body properly. Once that's done, we'll cut some little teeth in it so it doesn't squirt out of the axe body because that's a real nuisance when you start to weld and it squirts out of there like a watermelon seed. So I think this will end up being a two, maybe even a three-part video. We'll pick up with the grinding and the welding in the next video and that should also get the entire axe forged and maybe ready for heat treat. But rarely do I heat treat the same day I do the forging. I like to let it anneal overnight, do the final grinding, shaping, and then harden and temper it. So that'll probably be a third video. So I would look for three videos out of this series and they will probably post on consecutive Fridays. This video should have been available on Friday and the next one will be available next Friday, even though I'll probably film it tomorrow. And then the Friday after that, we should have the third part of this and then we should have it all concluded, have it on a handle, have the thing ready to go out to the customer. I hope you have time in your day to get out to your shop, but be safe. Wear your safety glasses, and we'll see you for the next one.